Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration. In the last episode, as I'm sure you remember, I got the uh, Deep Space Science production uh, being uh, w up and working and working quite well, reasonably nicely as you can see. We've got these um, these, these these science packs coming out here and bimbling off down this belt. Um, as the eagle-eyed among you will have noticed, the reason it's going as slowly as it is is because of this shortage of, of Naquium here. And I'll get back to that in a moment, but the short-term reason for that is that there's only one machine here turning the ingots into plates, and that's pretty slow. So I'm going to go over at some point and put in some more machines. That's a fairly easy fix to do, but it does need to be done. Um, but there's, there are more sort of deep and integral problems than that. But at the moment, I don't really care because the science is being produced at a reasonably approve, appropriate rate. And it's coming over here and being put into this um, into this box here. And that's quite interesting. I've noticed that they've got uh, the science packs have a, definitely have a blue tinge when they're on the belt. But when it's the icon on the box there, it, look, it actually does look black. So um, that's maybe why I thought they were black before. Although now to look really closely, I could be convinced it's a very dark blue. Anyway, that's getting rather off topic. Um, you'll notice that there's about 800, almost 900 of them in here. Um, and that's because I um, messed up slightly. I I forgot that uh, these need to be filtered based on the um, type of science pack that's coming in. So I've set that correctly now to watch for that to be less than 30. However, it was previously set to be science pack 4s because previously I programmed it to be, as you can see here, from top down it goes 1, 2, 3, 4. Here it's top down, it's... Uh, can't see the ones over here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. This one is the other way up because I'd forgotten I was doing that. So this is going to go one, then two on this this line, three on this line, and wherever that go happens over here, three and then four here. So it's it's the other way round, which is why I messed that up. But oops, shush, don't tell anyone. I'm sure it doesn't really matter anyway. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so there's that. And in order to get that up and running nicely, I had to boost the production over here of the. Um, uh, of the, the uh, what's, what's this stuff called, ion stream, which meant I needed lots and lots of plasma to be generated. And the reason that that was causing me issues in the last episode was because I didn't have enough oil available to produce the orange sludge, this stuff, the chemical gel, in order to get that produced. So, in order to fix that, well, one, th one thing, I've come in and I've put in a lot more of these particle accelerators, and that just isn't going to work because it doesn't have a belt along here, so that needs to be like that somewhere. Um, that'll fix that one when I next go out there. So I've got more particle accelerators, I've got more plasma generators, and that now means that these, these tanks are nearly full. This one's running fairly low, so perhaps I need even more um, plasma generators. The thing that's quite noticeable is that the particle accelerators use absolutely crazy amounts of power. Um, you'll notice that compared to everything else, they are by far the most hungry thing here. And that's with them pumped. That's with them running at minus 70% of the amount of power they normally use, and that's almost the absolute minimum you can get down to. You can get down to minus 80%, but that's not much further. So the extra speed is still probably worthwhile. And if we go back sometime, yeah, here we go. You'll see that at this point they're using about 250 megawatts. Here um, they were using 800 megawatts, and that was pushing this beyond the, the point beyond the capacity it was capable of. So I've um, that was that was when I then came along and took this down from being two speed and two efficiency down to um, one speed and three efficiency, just to get the power consumption down a little bit. I may or may not if I if I need more, then I can put another plume of them out here. And with the with the extra uh, tier three efficiency module in there, that brings that that knocks 100% off the energy consumption in, e easily. It, the, the only problem is that the um, the speed modules add 80% on. So, you know, between them they 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 kind of balance out. I want to keep it low as it is. So I can, yes, I can put more of these in if I need to. But at the moment, it seems to be okay. I suspect I am going to need to put more in though, because lots of the later deep space sciences use quite a lot of the, the various types of clouds. So I think I'm going to need a lot more of these plasma generators as well. But that's something I can do later. So as I was saying, the the, uh, the problem at that point was the chemical gel that was being, I say being produced, it was the chemical gel that there wasn't enough of it being produced that was the problem. And the reason that that was a problem, if we go back over here, you can see this, this machine here is now happy. It's filled up the chemical gel here, um, but it was failing before because it didn't have enough. Um, is it petroleum gas for this one? I think it is. Yes, it is. There, you can see it. That's, that's something else. Petroleum. Yeah, petroleum gas was not being made quickly enough. Um, and that was because we were running out of crude oil up here because we were bringing in the, the, um, 
the methane ice to here. As you can see, this is this is run out. It was then being brought around here and turned into oil. And there was the and because my methane ice production over here is running very very low. There's 131,000 left and only four drills working on for it. That was insufficient. So I've built this ship here. And this was probably the main the main focus of the last session was getting the um, getting the oil running, a, a, getting basically getting oil running from somewhere that's a bit more reliable. And I wanted to move away from shipping it up from Norvis's coal and then um, and then liquefying the coal because that uses firstly it uses a lot of coal and I and I didn't have a huge amount of it on Norvis at the time. Uh, and I had enough, but it was it was getting used up. It was getting used up at rather rather too fast a rate, um, and it requires water, and it's just generally it's a fairly major process to be running up here. So <clears throat> I decided it was best to to move away from that. What's going on here? Okay, I used to have a steam supply there, and I don't anymore. Um, so what I've done now is I've got oil being brought up in these ta in these tankers, and this one is nearly empty. As you can see, it's dribbling slowly out into these tanks here, and then it will be used up by these machines as as they require it. Eventually, this will get down to a low enough number that this will trigger. What are we, what are we watching for? We're watching for less than 25,000. We've currently got 27,000. So we need to pump another 2,000 out of it, and then the ship will go. And this is absolutely fine at the moment. This isn't a fluid flow problem. This is a demand is not keeping up with supply problem, which isn't actually a problem. This is how it should be, how I like it to be, how... Yeah, this, this, makes, me, this makes me reasonably happy, because... There is enough oil available here to just the, the, these tanks are all full. These tanks aren't quite empty, so the ship hasn't had to go. This 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 is running well at the moment. So this ship is sitting here happily, and um, yeah, we'll eventually go when when another two thousand oil gets used up. So where does that ship come from? I hear you say. Well, a sailor, of course, because that's the that's the oily moon. So out here, I've joined onto the the basic the existing system the existing rail system here brought the tracks up here we've got another massive supply of tanks here and the reason I've used these tanks rather than these ones despite these being a 25,000 tank and these being a hundred thousand tank is that these ones are only good for rocket fuel so we can on literally only fit rocket fuel into these tanks because they're a, a special type and they're too good for other fluids so over here we've got massive bank of tanks the idea of this is that this should be significantly more tanks than there are on the ship and that means that we shouldn't have any sort of supply problems on this side while we're trying to pump the oil across into the ship and hopefully it'll it'll load it up as quickly as possible after watching it fill up i thought actually we should be loading the ship from the other side as well so that's why there's some ghost tanks here that are also waiting for oil and at some point I need to go down and build those up and also have some sort of pipe system going round the top of here. But I didn't know exactly how far up to take it because of the size of the ship. I mean, I suppose I could check in my um, pace buffer and see if the ship's in there. Um, yes, there it is. So the ship fits in there like that. Actually, so it's not that far up. As long as we go above those rocks, it'll be okay. So I could come in here and just say, well, actually, let's put that like that and that and that and we can then happily feed the oil around like that and that'll keep everything um that'll keep all that that will keep that will then it's going to be a slow process filling these tanks up i should probably put some pumps in as well to get it to work, work a bit more effectively it'll be a slow process because it's just this one pipe feeding them but they've got all they've got all the time while the ship flies off to norvis orbit and unloads and flies back again to top these tanks up so i think that's probably going to be absolutely fine um, and this, and this will mean we can then pump the oil. Oh, hang on a minute. I need pumps on this side as well. That's not going to work at all. Um, and with that ship we just looked at, which anchors to there. I haven't left room for the pumps. Ah, Muppet. So we'll actually need to move all of this out a little bit further like that. And then put in pumps over here like this. And then the underground space pipes like this. And then when the ship lands here, oops, there it is, there's the ship. When the ship lands here, yes, they'll all be able to uh, fill up. And as you'll notice at the bottom, we've also got it filling up with rocket fuel as well. So the ship lands there, it'll pick up rocket fuel, and that's why this is that's why this ship runs off rocket engines rather than ion engines, because that means it can just fill up with everything it needs in one place. I don't need to worry about any sort of refueling plumbing up on Norvis orbits. This will be really really easy. So yeah, once that's all built up, this ship will fill up much more quickly and. Uh, yeah, that should should just work, TM. Uh, he said, I know it's famous last words and all that, but uh, yeah, that's the theory. Still at twenty-seven thousand there, because we're not, we don't seem to actually be u really using any oil over here. None of these machines are doing anything, as far as I can tell. 
so it's just sitting there and, and not unloading oil but that's fine i mean when the, when the system isn't doing anything it's probably it's expected behavior for it to for it to, for it to be idling like this so so I'm, I'm i'm okay with that and yeah as i said we've got all these rocket fuel tanks on the back here for it to take off from as you can see you taking off from um Asalia and flying over here is used 18% of my available rocket fuel, so that's 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 fine. We don't we don't we don't need to worry about that at all. There's plenty. These these tanks are probably more far more than capable of um, of, of doing everything that's needed. But I always feel it's better to go a bit a bit over the top than to go than to put some um, put put a load of stuff in, and then go. Oh, the ship isn't actually powerful enough. So yeah, that's this ship. We, and um, chat named it the Beefy Tanker, which I'm, I'm I'm quite happy with that. It's not really an oil-related pun, but it'll do. Maybe it should be called Oil Be Back or Oil Be There for You or something like that. Maybe or maybe I'll just use that for this um, for this for this episode title. So yes, getting oil up here onto into Norvis orbit. I feel that was that was sort of the, the main push for this episode, and it's done it quite neatly with this spaceship. And I've been able to. I, I was when I was building this, I was able to not worry about the size of the ship too much because I've now got available. I've got I've got 1,500 hull stress maximum size of ships now, so I didn't have to worry about it at all. Granted, it came out in the end at only 750, so because I don't have all of the... Um, is, this, is the ship even here? So I was going to show. No, it's not. Even, because even though I don't have all of the heat-related power generation stuff that some of the big ships have, I just... I, was, I wasn't really... Exp oh, it's about to leave. Plip. There we go. I wasn't really expecting it to be a problem, but it's nice to just not have to worry about it. So here we go, using the rocket engines, and it's, it's not very far to Asalia, so these engines are more than adequate. I probably could have got away with just having two engines on it and make it a bit slower. I don't really need the shields on the front. We're still producing about twice the amount of power it needs, even with the lasers going, even with the shields running. It's 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 great. This, this ship is very, very simple. It just works, so I'm pretty happy with this. It, it requires... There was a few little bits of debugging required, mostly relying, mostly related to making sure I got all the wires linked up properly. So there we go. Now it lands. This pump starts pushing the oil across into here, and as you can see, these tanks fill up pretty quickly. Actually, um, the ones on the other side fill up much more slowly, which is why I want to have this system on the other side to push it in from both sides. But it's basically okay. Most of the problems I had with this were related to not having, in, having not having all of the wires in around here that I needed. So there was, um, I think I, repl I changed the number of these tanks around a couple of times, and then so I had to go back and put this wire in, and I forgot that, and I had to link up this this um, combinator here, and yeah, there were a few minor issues, but basically it all came together pretty nicely. I'm happy with that. The next thing that was uh, that I had a look at. So um, as I was discussing back over in. Norvis Orbit, which is, oh, this is all in, this isn't alphabetical order, it is, that's very unhelpful. <laughs> Norvis Orbit, there we go. So, as I, as I was discussing here, we don't have an enormous amount of um, Naquium available. So, this this one is currently probably okay. We've got, we've got 60 in this station, which is some. There's also supposed to be some down here. This station is completely empty. So, we take a look over here, and we go, well, there's, there's actually, there's, there's some... Um, ore in these in these um, warehouses. Not really enough for an entire spaceship, but there's at least some, so that's okay. But down here, there is only 11 in this in this warehouse. So that's the currently the, the, that's the current problem with um, with that. And if we look at the map here, then we can see the the there and knack agains are well. One of them has stopped. Okay, that's a concern. One of them has just arrived back at Norvis orbit. So if we go, if, this is Norvis orbit. If we look over here, the ship has just landed. It's unloading a load of Naquium. You don't get a huge amount of Naquium on these ships, unfortunately, which is the problem. So that's that's, that's basically a full warehouse worth of Naquitite went out, and it brought back this much Naquium. And that's well, it's not very much, is it? So this is the this is the problem I'm having. It's let's loaded that up. There's now 226. That's not even enough for a train. So we need basically two. We're taking two loads of this um, Naquitite out and getting one one train wagon's worth of Naquium back. So that it, it's a problem, especially as it appears that one of my um, Naquium transport ships has gone to sleep. What's wrong with you? Is it the same? Yeah. So this is the same problem I had with the uh, with the long range Naquium ships. It seems that sometimes the speed signal doesn't get properly copied from. Um, from these accumulate these comb combinators through the decider combinators over into the into the uh, spaceship console. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set this manually, and this does seem to work. If I just set those to arbitrary large numbers, then the ship will fly, and it'll it'll do the things it's meant to be doing. Um, we'll transport the Naquin back and forth. That's probably going to be enough. The problem is though that 
we're trying as I said, we're transporting 5,100 pieces of anacrotite over, and then we're transporting like um, what was it? It was about 200 back again, and that's it's just not good enough, unfortunately. So um, what I'm what what I plan to do for the future is to go back out to Realm of Shadows, and I've, t I've talked about this in previous episodes, but what I want to do is it change the product systems over here to have um, to do the first step of naquium processing which is the pulverizing so pulver crushing it down from naquatite into crushed naquatite somewhere around here i may well do it in this space here because there's space and i could just slap down some um, scaffolding and it'll, it'll, it, that'll work reasonably well <clears throat> i also want to improve the rate it's coming onto the spaceships because this one belt it's i mean it is fast enough at the moment kind of um because it's te because the there's well, just because generally there's, there's there's bottlenecks everywhere, and I suppose if we make it four times as dense, which is what will happen with the um, the naquium with the crushing. Because if we, if we have a look in here, naquitite. So there we go. We bring in the um, we dig up the naquitite. We get naquitite. Fine. You then crush the naquitite. It takes four naquitite to make one crushed naquitite. So actually, maybe this isn't too bad. If we just if I just bring crushed in here instead of uncrushed. Then we'll fit four times as much in the ship. It'll load four times as quickly, effectively, because each one of each item on the belt will will represent four times as much naquium. Um, so maybe this is actually okay. But I was thinking, with my new expanded um, spaceship abilities, I might make these ships a bit bigger. Now this is going to be a little bit awkward because there's stuff on both sides of the ship here. But if I move if I move this launch. Uh, space probe rocket silo out somewhere else, maybe up here, or something like that. It doesn't doesn't really matter exactly where. Then I can make the ship about twice as wide and fit six of these um, warehouses in three, 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 and then feed into a second three there. Yes, it'll take twice as long to load, but no, I don't think that's a problem. I'd also be I also the other the other slight concern is that a ship that's twice as big might have twice the hull stress. But I think wider ships tend to be tend to contribute less to hull stress than short than than long sh thin ships like this and also if i make it twice as wide i'll be able to rotate this round a bit i'll be able to reorganize this stuff here and make that a bit a bit more compact a bit shorter and maybe maybe just rotate this whole system around so it goes horizontally across the ship instead of vertically i'll play around with it see what i can do um, and I can then even put some more engines on the back, so it'll go a bit faster. So this ship will generally get a lot better, but I will have to come out here and move all of this infrastructure around a bit just to make it work better with the new ship design. I will also have to do the same in Norvis Orbit, because over here, again, I've got the whole thing built around that long, skinny ship. So all of this stuff will need to be shunted across a chunk. Now that shouldn't be too difficult, as long as these spaceships aren't here, because there's not that much stuff there. So I think I'll probably do that. The other um, on the other sort of thing that'll affect this is down on Tulip, where we've got we've got the um, the system here that's dealing with it. But that's not going to be too bad. All I have to do there is reprogram these inserters, and then pass, and then this belt instead of going into these crushers, it just can come up here and go into into this onto this belt and feed it straight into these machines. So I don't see that being a problem at all at all. We're just going to feed that straight through it. What we might find is that we're not producing enough of all the things, all of the other ingredients. These belts might not be fast enough to run it through at quite the rate we'd like to. But this system is idle so much of the time, I don't think that's an issue. So, speaking of this area, I found that the main um, bottleneck for processing the naquium at one point was the was the, the, the rate that this, this green vitalic acid was coming in. Um, so I traced that back down here, down here, down here. And it turned out that was limited by the rate that the glass was coming in, and we just weren't, and and that, and the glass rate was limited, being limited by the amount of stone that was being produced on this planet. So down here on Tulip, we had a stone mine over here, but as you can see, it's got completely exhausted. So there is now no. I've, I've basically used all that stone, turning well, nearly all that stone, turning it into glass for this system, and also this bit here was dealing with it, and that wasn't fast enough. So the way this, the way the system worked was there, there were three sources of of, of glass essentially so the first one that I need to use up as quickly as possible is this one coming along here where we have stone and sand coming out of the naquium processing that comes down to here where it gets processed into glass and into sand and into glass and that needs to be used up as a top priority and as you can see there's a filter on the insert there so that one has gone through and has gone over here to be turned into the into the vitalic acid supplies the next one 
is that down here we have core mining and so this stone is basically free because it doesn't use any resources to get it apart from electricity which is also free because I'm using solar power. So this stone then gets filtered out like this and flows up and that goes up this belt here and then eventually gets split out here pass through here, crush down into glass, and then we prioritise that one. Then as the top up, it used to be that we were, bring, we were choosing which stone to use from here. So we choose this one, and then we'd use this stone from the train system. But because that was there was such a poor supply there, and this just wasn't fast enough at processing it, I decided the easiest way to sort this out would be to put in down here, I put in another rocket site, a rocket landing pad. And this is, yes, this is old tech now because I have spaceships, but because I already have all of the glass infrastructure built up and working around the uh, the rocket system, I thought, I'll just shove this in here, this will work. And then, so we'll get rockets coming up from Norvis every so often as required and dumping, dumping glass into here. That can then be unloaded onto this belt where it runs up and then this is the lowest priority glass so this this will only be used when all of the others are used up but as you can see it is still flowing through quite quickly because there's quite a lot of, there's still quite a lot of demand on it we're also now we're making the vitalic acid again we are starting to use the um the uh, vitamelange from the uh, from, from the from the core mining process again that's prioritized over the stuff that comes in by train because it's free and the stuff that comes by in by train theoretically can run out but it's there available if necessary and as we look down here that means that this is starting to flow granted very very slowly and that's flowing down to fill up these these trains uh, which will go onto this spaceship as usual and oh bloody hell okay this train has got cut again so we've, we've talked about trains getting wrecked by um, spaceships taking off at the wrong time before um, this one here we've <clears throat> we've destroyed this train we've cut this train by taking out one of the wagons in it this one's actually had the locomotive taken out by the by the uh, train by the spaceship moving so I'm going to I don't understand why this ship has come why this um, spaceship has ended up back here actually this is all a bit weird so up here, we have a system that watches all of the inputs to make sure that all of the inputs have got the correct numbers on them. And then when the inputs are all correct, it passes a signal through that's in one of the, in these combinators. Now, the signal that says that, yes, there are enough trains here is delayed slightly because it has to go through these uh, decider combinators in order to trigger, in order to set it correctly. So there's a one tick delay in there. And that means that there is a, a one tick where the ship will think it's ready to take off, but it actually isn't because the trains have left, and the trains have potentially got into the gaps here, into the doors. Um, so the train will then lift off. The, the ship will then lift off and cut the trains in half, and that's what's happened here, uh, probably. Um, and I was attempting to, to fix that problem by having these this gate monitoring system up here that goes: Is the gate? Are the gates all closed? If the gates are all closed, then you can think about taking off. However, something funny has happened here and it's not worked. I'm going to need to have a look at this, but I'll wait till the next episode. I have noticed that these gates are not linked into the system. However, I don't think that's the problem. These gates do seem to be, but I'm not sure what's happened here. I'm going to need to go out and fix it. So that's, um, yeah, that's not meant to happen quite like that. So we'll, I'll need to, I'll need to come out here, sort this out and, and fix it up and try and make sure it doesn't happen again, because that, that's not good having my trains cut in half. I don't want that. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm glad I talked about that because it meant I noticed the problem. The next thing I've done, and this is this is a fairly minor thing, I have to admit, but one of the things I've, I've done in, in the interest of um, general efficiency and improvements and, and whatnot, I've come over here and I've upgraded all of the um, productivity modules in this in this um, uh, lab to uh, tier, these are tier 7s I think. Yes, productivity module sevens. So these get me a plus 16% productivity boost from every single one, meaning that this machine is now running at 116% productivity, uh, plus 116% productivity rather. So for every every science pack that goes through it, it will do 2.16 researches, which is compared to well before that, um, I think I was going to about plus 90%. I think uh, so. It it's a significant boost, and because producing these science packs is basically what everything else in my factory is working towards anything that can cut down, cut down on the amount of science packs I use is very very worthwhile so that was a major and an important thing the next and I think final thing unless I, unless I think of something else you know what I'm like things I want to talk about is over here on gear often this is my um, coal, a copper mining system so we've got core miners here that are running they're digging up 
loads and loads of copper core fragments which are being crushed down into core, normal core fragments, copper and stone, which is getting loads onto trains. As you can tell, it's about three quarters um, copper coming out of these. So there's a lot of copper and not so much of the other things. And that's, that was deliberate. I came out to this planet and set this up because I wanted more copper to be brought out to, uh, to Norvis because I had a shortage of it at the time. However, if we now look on Norvis, um, there's a bit of a surplus of copper. So that has worked, that system has worked a bit too well. We now have too much copper. It's jammed up everything and has caused all kinds of problems. Nothing is working anymore. Grumble, grumble, grumble. Oh dear. We've also jammed up on coal, but that's... Um, a slightly different problem. So what I've done in order to get around this is I've linked up all of these um, warehouses together and then oh, all the way over to here and down down here linked up to these warehouses as well and down here I'm subtracting 75,000 from the amount of copper ore that is here and then transmitting that 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 out and the theory is well these have got each of these have got 25,000 copper ore in so is that enough? Hmm. My plan was to say if these are less than half full, then I want to trans. Then I want to Then I only then should a, should a spaceship come in with with copper stuff. Um, but now I'm 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 thinking my numbers are wrong. So that the total capacity here. Oh. Uh, Oh no no that is right. So seventy five thousand would mean uh, each of these would be half full because these stole twenty five thousand each. There's six of them, so yeah, seventy five thousand would be these half full. So if there's so so this is sending uh, subtracting seventy five thousand and then transmitting it at the other end on Gearothan. We're watching that we're picking up that number here. So we've got at the moment we've got hundred we've got one hundred six thousand coming in, and then this is turning that into an O signal O, multiplying it by one. So we've got one hundred six thousand O, and we're passing that into the spaceship. Now the spaceship um, is currently parked in deep space because I turned it off. I stopped I stopped it manually because I just need I didn't want this this massive load of copper to arrive on Norvis because it would just make the problems even even worse. Um, so but what is now going to happen is we're we're feeding the signal in from the spaceship through through the clamp along here. And then when we lift when we try and think about lifting off from gear often, we're also monitoring to see if we've got if, if O is less than zero and feeding that into here feeding that into somewhere um is it this no no that's the train one have i not wired that up properly again or is it hidden behind other wires i i, I can't really tell um, <laughs> but anyway this is this is the, what, what's supposed to be happening here is that this is monitoring for the amount of um copper the amount of copper that's on Norvis and saying that this ship won't leave gear often unless there is less than 75,000 copper on Norvis. So it's a similar system to the ones I'm using elsewhere for um, spaceships that are bringing, are bringing stuff up from um, from planetside or for rockets that are bringing stuff up. Basically saying don't load, don't send the ship off unless there is, unless there's a sufficiently low quantity that we actually need it. So I believe that should probably work, although I've worried myself a little bit, so I'll have a look at that in the next stream. Uh, make sure that is correct. Um, and then, yeah, over here, well, we've got all of this. I've, I've, I've blocked this um, belt as well. Um, in fact, I could... Yeah, I've blocked this belt because I don't want this to unload all of this copper until there's somewhere to put it over here. So at the moment, as I was saying, this is now completely jammed up with copper. It's not going to do anything until a copper train comes in. But we've also got this completely jammed full of co jammed full of copper, and this train is sitting here because I, I ran a few manual trains over, and then this one's just going to sit here until it empties. Um, so, yeah, basically, I've got too much copper. I don't really know what to do with it. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, it's 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 a funny problem to have, but it's a it's a sl it's a fairly serious problem to have actually because it means all the other inputs have also stopped. Um, and it's a bit problematic. Unfortunately, I didn't go and fix it until it was already a fairly serious problem. So all I can really do is start trying to do lots of researches. Let's let's carry on with the rocket reusability research because hopefully this will get me through. Lot this will use up a, a certain amount of copper. It'll require things to be brought up to the space station. It'll require copper to be pro therefore copper to be processed down here. Hopefully that'll put a bit of load on the whole system. But there are so many buffers on the in intermediate levels. Ooh, what's this come for? No, it's come for coal again. <laughs> Not so helpful. Well, it is helpful because I've got a lot of coal. 
30, 34,000 isn't actually that much. Um, I have a fair amount of coal, but I still need to get the copper used up and gone. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, there's a lot of buffers in there. So, for example, um, if I use green circuits in orbit, <coughs> then if I use green circuits for one of my on one of my produ production things, say the um, over here for arbitrarily, I don't know if I do even use green circuits, but let's just let's just pretend I do for, for making making these these science packs I'm using. Then they'll need to come, so we'll need to use up the buffer that's in the station here. <coughs> then that'll get topped up from the supply that's over here in this in this warehouse once this warehouse once this warehouse has been filled up to the point that this is empty which is 37,000 of them away then this then that'll call up another rocket that'll mean we then call up so the rocket will fly up from Norvis from here uh, from here so we'll then have a load more green circuits will flow through to fill the rocket back up which will mean when these chests run out we'll call in another train and then so that'll mean the trains will be called from over here and so that'll, um, and then when, once these chests, so these chests will then, these machines will start making more green circuits, and that'll use copper. And then once enough has been used out of these chests, it'll call another train from, from over here, which will cause this copper, to, the copper that's to, more copper to be made by all of these refineries, that will cause more copper to be fed out of these. And once these crate, once these crates have emptied and this train has emptied then it'll then it'll eventually call another train over from here and then we can start refilling those again so there's a lot of buffers that need to be emptied so just using up more stuff somewhere in the somewhere later down the um, downstream doesn't mean you'll immediately use up all the copper you expect to from there so yeah there's a lot of a lot of steps to go through before this cop before this copper surplus will will be used up in the meantime, well, we shall we shall see how it goes. Um, but at least I know, at least I feel like I've solved the problem for later. Much, much later. But it's solved. <laughs> right, I've been rambling on for more than half an hour, and a bit of that was ranting about um, about how my, how well my copper supplies have been going. So I think this is probably a good stop point to stop. There's been a couple of very, very minor things. Like, I went in and cleared out some of the things I've been talking about before. Like, um, over here... There was a, there was a problem with the um, with these data cards that were coming out. They weren't being sorted properly. I fixed that up. That wasn't exactly rocket engineering. You, you know you know how these things work. And if you and if you don't and you want to see, then you can you can go back and watch the stream. I mean it's it's up there on YouTube and Twitch. Please please feel free to uh, to watch the old recordings if you if you want to see a bit more detail about it. Um, I, I turned the engines on on the Naquifier 2 and I believe have fixed it properly. Um, simply as I was saying when I was talking about. Um, about that other one, that other ship that was stopped. I went in and just programmed these numbers in manually. I think in the future I should probably have a combinator that always just feeds speed signals to the um, to the ship to the ship all the time, no matter what. But yeah, that's something I can do in the future. And I think that's everything I have for you. So as always, thank you for watching. If you come along on um, oh dear, what days I do these? If you come back on Wednesday evening, um, then then you can you can watch the stream where I'll be going through and solving all the problems I've been talking about today. So maybe making the with these ships a bit a bit wider they're a bit a bit a bit heftier carry a bit more um, naquitite um, but first I'll probably just put in the simple and easy fix which is to which will quadruple the throughput um, by just crushing it out on site over there because I've decided that's going to be easier um, then on Mondays we have the uh, Minecraft streams where we're playing uh, Dungeons Dra Minecraft Dungeons Dragons and Space Shuttles, which is a massive hefty mod pack. You can watch us go merrily flying through the air with our slime slings. Um, apparently my wizard tower has started production, so that'll be uh, nice to see. I can't, I'm uh, looking forward to moving all of my stuff into that instead of just a, a dirty little hole in the ground that I dug. Um, so that's 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 going on. I shall develop do some more stuff with blood magic and plant magic and who knows what else, what other stuff I'll I'll, I'll find to uh, to amuse myself while I'm playing. The summary videos of both those streams they come out on uh, at the weekends. You you know that because you're you're watching this video. So yeah, uh, don't forget to come back and watch those and to catch up on them. Um, and there's GTA videos every Thursday as to, at least as long as I'm, I'm able to make them fast enough. And I want to do some more real life videos. I've got some car mods and things that I need to do at some point. So that, that, that at some point there will be more videos. There's plenty to come. <laughs> um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed the show and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.